Hello, I'm JJ Joaquin, and welcome to Philosophy and What Matters, where we discuss things that matter from a philosophical point of view. Today, we talk about how we experience time. We experience events in time in two different ways. On the one hand, we experience them flowing from past, present, to future. In 2019, the coronavirus pandemic is still in the future. Now, in 2020, we are experiencing it. Now, in a few months' time, hopefully, it will be in the past. Now, on the other hand, we also experience events in time as succeeding one another or simultaneous with each other. For example, the 2020 pandemic happened before the U.S. elections. The death of Sean Connery happened after the March 2020 lockdowns. Biden winning the election is simultaneous with Trump losing it. So what, what do philosophers have to say about these two ways of experiencing time? Is one more fundamental than the other? Now, guiding us to the philosophy of time and why it matters is Nathan O'Glander, David M. French, Professor Emeritus of Philosophy at the University of Michigan, Flint. Hello, Professor O'Glander. Welcome to Philosophy and What Matters. Uh, hello, JJ. I'm delighted to be here. Okay, so before getting into the topic, let's first discuss your philosophical background. How did you get into philosophy? Uh, yes, well, um, I, I, I want to just say something about the first paragraph. I mean, okay. I have a lot to say about my philosophical background, but, but it's, it's a very good paragraph because um, uh, within it, it, it gets at, um, you know, what uh, motivates me in, mm -hmm. in uh, philosophical problems. So that, for example, um, uh, you know, everybody knows uh, Aquinas' famous uh, statement that, um, paraphrasing, uh, if, uh, if, you know, nobody asks me, I know what time is. But, if somebody, <laughs> um, you know, I'm try, okay. So, I think that's St. Augustine, though. St. Augustine. Yes. <laughs> right, right. Saint, Saint Thomas? Yes, he said St. Thomas. <laughs> That's yeah. all right. <laughs> yes, yes, it was Augustine. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, and, and this is a perfectly good example because when we think of time in terms of its passing or in terms of, you know, an event in the future becoming present and then receding into the past, Mm -hmm. We think of time as having a uh, a flowing aspect, as moving, you know, mm -hmm. as events mm -hmm. time moving through time, you know, right, 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 changing. And uh, when we think of uh, when we express time in terms of um, uh, earlier and later, uh, then uh, we also think in that way we think of of those same events. Uh, as being fixed in mm -hmm. the relation that they have. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that uh, is, is, you know, could be puzzling. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how can events or even the same event be move, having a flowing dynamic quality to it mm -hmm. and, and also it being fixed? You know, how could time be both uh, moving uh, and fixed. And moving. <laughs> right. You know, that's, that's 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 just stating the obvious mm -hmm. and showing that what's obvious is not that obvious once you start. You know, at least it's a philosophical problem. Mm -hmm. At any rate, uh, getting back to my philosophical background. All right. So uh, I grew up in the Bronx, mm -hmm. and uh, when I was young, uh, a teenager. Um, my parents passed away. You know, my, my father when I was 16 and my mother when I was 17. So uh, I, when I graduated from high school, which I was almost 17, not quite, I got a job. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I planned on going to uh, college. So, but mm -hmm. I couldn't get into it. You know, I was grew up in the New York City and, and they had a, uh, City College, which is a branch of the City University of New York, but it was hard to get in there. Mm -hmm. My grades weren't good enough. So mm -hmm. I, I uh, went to night school. I started night school. 
And, um, you know, my parents always wanted me to be like a doctor or a dentist or a lawyer or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, 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 you know, so when I started uh, college, I signed up for um, uh, a chemistry, a, pre, a pre-dent major, pre-dental school major uh-huh. in chemistry uh-huh. and, and a philosophy class, okay? I didn't know anything about philosophy, but I thought that philosophy was uh, people who did philosophy lived in an ivory tower. <laughs> Literally, you know, or in a lighthouse, not an ivory tower. No, uh, okay. lighthouse. <laughs> yeah, you know, a lighthouse in the ocean somewhere by themselves, they did their own thing. And, and that, you know, I'm, I'm 16, 17 years old. This is what I'm thinking. Oh yeah, that would be good. That's what I'd like, get away from it all and live in this lighthouse. So I'm gonna take a philosophy class. So I took this class from uh, a guy who, uh, uh, he was a great teacher. He, he sat, okay, so this is in 1962. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, you know, when I went to school, every teacher had a lectern, stood behind the lectern, they were wearing a shirt and tie. Uh-huh. And they'd, okay, this guy is sitting in the, uh, he's sitting on the table, the front of the table with his legs dangling. <laughs> this guy is hip. <laughs> so so uh, I didn't really understand what he was saying. Mm-hmm. This was philosophy 101, but uh, I um, uh, admired his wisdom. You know, I thought like the guy's brilliant; he knows about everything. Mm-hmm. And and um, I I would uh, and I wanted to be like him. You know, I said okay. I mean, like during school, I had no idea what I'm going to do and so on. But uh, I wanted to be. You know, I said okay. I want to major in philosophy. Okay. And I a lot of, uh, you know, so I, I'd, um, of course, Linda's the same way. She told me we have a lot in common, for example, besides the fact that she's in philosophy, she also liked to carry around her philosophy books. Mm-hmm. Probably philosophy majors feel that way, you know. <laughs> going back and forth to school uh, and to work, and I had my pocket Aristotle, you know. So <laughs> it, not that anybody cared. But okay, so um, so I spent two years going to night school and working at various jobs. And my mother in her wisdom said, you know, I'll, I'll give you money if you go to school. Mm-hmm. So after two years and not getting anywhere. I mean, I was enjoying my life, but I wasn't, uh, except that my last job was in the post office. Mm-hmm. Now, if you ever heard the expression, I don't know if it's an American expression or not, it's called going postal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what it means is uh, there was a time in the States where a lot of people who worked at the post office were getting so angry about working there that it's not funny that they shoot people. <laughs> <laughs> it, it happened so much they talked about going postal right? uh-huh, uh-huh. And, uh, so um, I was going postal but mm-hmm. I, I mean anybody but I could tell that I, I had to improve my life so how so, old were you then uh, I was um, uh, 18 18 okay was and you went postal at 18 <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I figured this is, you know, I have to improve myself. I have to get more education so that I could have a little bit more control over what happens to me. You know, the post office is, is like uh, the armed services. It's very hierarchical. Mm-hmm. And you have to listen to the person who's above you or you're finished, you know, and mm-hmm. okay, you know, but I, I wanted to try and get above. Not, not in the post office, but just in life. So, uh, but my grades were very poor. Mm-hmm. So I decided, but I, I was gonna major in philosophy. I didn't have any other philosophy classes. I spent two years in night school and I, I amassed like 15 credits or something like that. So I was going nowhere fast. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I uh, applied to any school where you didn't have to take uh, college uh, entrance exams. 
Okay. <laughs> you know, because I didn't do well on the ACTs and they didn't have an application fee. Mm -hmm. So I applied to so many schools that my high school told me, stop applying, you're going to get in somewhere. <laughs> you know, so I finally got in to three schools, one of which was the University of Iowa. Mm -hmm. Now, New York, you don't know Iowa from Ohio from anywhere. You know, if you're <laughs> New York, there's California, and in between, who knows? <laughs> so they're very provincial. Uh -huh, right, 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 right. So um, uh, Iowa had, you know, when I was growing up as a kid, and to this day, I, was, um, um, I like sports. Mm -hmm. I participate, and I like to uh, watch sports. And um, uh, when I was a kid growing up, Iowa had a good football team. And the year before I finally decided to go out there, they had won the Rose Bowl, which mm. is the, uh, uh, the football game that determines the national champion. Mm -hmm. All right, so I was very much aware of them and I got accepted there and the other two schools, it, they, you know, who knows? And I applied and I went to Iowa. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know anything about Bergman. Mm -hmm. Uh, or anything, you know, but I went there and I, I wanted to um, major in philosophy. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the uh, desk at the time you, you'd register by, uh, um, you'd get a card and then you'd go to someplace and give the card you'd register. And I went to the philosophy table mm -hmm. where I got the card to register and I, I said, you know, I want to read uh, a major in philosophy. I, I guess I should take some philosophy courses and some religion courses. Mm -hmm. The guy looked at me uh, who said, well, why, why would you want to take any religion courses? <laughs> okay. <Anyway. laughs> so you had the conception that philosophy and religion are allied topics? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, definitely. You know, uh -huh. I mean, I just taken this one class. I don't know. I, I just, uh, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. but, um, I was dispelled of that quickly. Although <laughs> I did, although I did take a couple of religion courses as electives mm -hmm. that uh, that I enjoy. You know, history of religion and one on. But uh, so, um, all right. I, I worked hard. And um, I took one course from Bergman, an undergraduate course. And- uh, So this is the had, great Gustav Bergman of Vienna Circle. Gustav, Gustav Bergman. Uh, yeah. Okay, let me say a little bit about Gustav Bergman. I mean, you mentioned him in- Yeah. Um, the... And, you know, that, that's why I'm gonna start talking mm. about him. Mm. And, and also he had a uh, influence on my uh, philosophical career, mm -hmm. my philosophical life, and a lot of other stuff. So, but what I was saying was, I never Bergman. I never saw. Uh, I never had a teacher who would scream in class. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he wanted to make a point, uh, okay. So as you know, he was in the Vienna Circle. He was yes. the youngest member of the Vienna Circle when he uh, when he started attending, and. Um, uh, he uh, was very passionate about, I mean, I remember this after all these years. When was this? Like in 1965, okay? Mm -hmm. He was passionate in arguing that uh, free will and determinism was compatible. Yeah. <laughs> all these scientists were a thing, and you know, it's like, is it that important? Yes, yes, it's that mm -hmm. important. <laughs> it's at any rate, so uh, I became what uh, I, I call uh, a Bergmaniac. Mm -hmm. And a Bergmaniac is somebody who... Uh, a disciple. <laughs> okay, that's, 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 a, that's a tactful way of putting it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, uh, all right, and I graduated, and, uh, but they didn't want me to stay there. Mm -hmm. because, you know, I was getting too much. Okay, in, in Iowa, in fact, in the 60s, the late 50s and 60s, it was known as the Iowa School of Philosophy. 
mm. because uh, Bergman had uh, um, uh, devoted, uh, graduated so many students that in different places, and he himself was active in the philosophical uh, uh, world, mm -hmm. so that uh, um, he was known. But um, I went to Ohio State University because, uh, as I say, they didn't want me to go to graduate school there. They, they needed, I needed, a, you know, to see the rest of the world, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I went to Ohio State because they, they had uh, uh, three professors there, uh, two of whom were Bergman students. <laughs> so, so the Bergman School of Philosophy continues in Ohio State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went. So I went. So I went there. Mm -hmm. But then they they were leaving uh, that year, so I I went back to Iowa, mm -hmm. and uh, I stayed at Iowa. And so my second year, I'm taking a um, a seminar on uh, with him on um, uh, C. D. Broad's The Mind and Its Place in Nature. Mm, that's a classic. And, and it's classic, you know, yeah. I'm giving a report on uh, the traditional problem of uh, mind and body. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, it's a seminar class, 10 students or something like that, you know, in a, in a mm -hmm. old full shape uh, desk and so on. And, and he's um, also, I'm scared. All right, because he's, he's been known to uh, kick students out of graduate school for not doing a good job. Right? <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you this one story. I'm going to send you a paper. I, I wrote a paper. The, the anniversary, the 100th anniversary of his birth mm -hmm. was in 2006. Mm -hmm. And I, I wrote, a, I mean, they had philosophers go there, but I wrote a paper on uh, entitled um, Reminiscences of Bergman's Last Student. Uh -huh. And there, there are a lot of good stories in there, but one of the stories uh, has to do with, uh, I didn't witness this, but uh, from um, uh, a philosopher, well known, I, I don't remember his name, but a philosopher who was a student in his um, a graduate level philosophy of science class. Mm -hmm. And the first day he came into class and uh, he asked, um, all those uh, students who, uh, what was the question, who hadn't had philosophy or something like that, they never had philosophy, mm -hmm. uh, to stand up, uh -huh. okay? And when they, stood, when they stood up, they told them to leave. <laughs> 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 so so that's, that's what we're talking about here, you know? I mean, wow. they were graduating. <laughs> so, so I was worried, I was worried mm -hmm. when I was going giving a report in his class. So I, I oh man, I worked hard. Mm -hmm. And so I'm giving the report. And in the middle of the report, uh, he, uh, okay, so he's 64 at this age. He, he gets on the um, table and he, he lies down on the table with his, with his head like that. <laughs> And he, 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 he looks at me and he says, you know, there's a, a dissertation in C.D. Broad's The Mind and Its Place in Nature. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I don't know. I don't remember what I did, but um, uh, I, so that, that was uh, uh, meant that I was going to be writing my dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a brilliant report. Uh, we yeah. get <laughs> he, he liked it. He liked it. That's uh, what mattered. And so, like, uh, that, so that was my second year. I think in my third year, I asked him uh, if I could do an, uh, directed readings with him. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, but uh, when we can meet on Saturday morning, mm -hmm. I mean, he would come into the office every day at nine o'clock and he'd stay, you know, I mean, he, he was a hardworking guy. And so uh, Saturday, he said, you could come in on Saturday morning, Saturday mornings. And, and uh, oh, I wanted to do it. I asked him if I could do it on uh, McTaggart's The mm. Nature of Existence. Mm. And so what I would do, you know, I'd read something and I'd go in there with a question that I had over a paragraph or, or two. Mm. And he would read it. I would get 
that would get him started mm -hmm. uh, reading, um, uh, you know, in terms of how he understood that passage. Mm -hmm. And as he was uh, talking, he'd, he'd write down notes and, you know, write down the argument, what he was saying. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that, that's what, and then I'd say something to him in response to what he said, and I ask him a question or something, and mm -hmm. that would get started. And we go back and forth like that. <laughs> I remember one time, you know, I said something, and he jumped up on his seat. <laughs> he jumped on his seat, man. And, and I'm not gonna say what he said to me, but uh, you, you'll read it in the paper, and I'll send you the copy of that. <laughs> uh, he, he was, was quite a guy all right so and you I'm were sure. so you were really close so to speak uh yes i'd say so he mm -hmm. invited linda linda and i over for dinner once or twice mm -hmm. and uh, he commented to me he asked me if linda and i ever talk <laughs> why <laughs> Because we sure as hell didn't say much when he was at his house. <laughs> no, but he would, do, you, do you and Linda ever talk? You know? <laughs> I, I probably didn't say anything when he, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When he said, at any rate. Um, so then I graduated. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I didn't, I didn't graduate. So my fourth year, um, I was supposed to be working on my dissertation, but you know how that goes, or, or you don't, but I didn't get that much done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a job at UM Flint. This was, in, and, and it turned out that uh, two of the people, and it didn't turn out this way. Uh, it, 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 it was the only, I didn't get this job until July, mm -hmm. okay? It started in September. And, um, uh, the uh, two, of, two of the faculty there, uh, their dissertation advisors were Bergman students. <laughs> so the Bergman legacy continues in the uh, university yeah. <laughs> in Michigan. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. yes, yes, yes. So, of course, we're all retired now, but mm. and I'm his last student. So, yes, I, 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 um, uh, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, um, the fourth year I'm working on my dissertation and what, okay, so I started teaching in, in, uh, 72 in Flint mm -hmm. and then that summer I went back to Iowa mm -hmm. and, uh, to finish, to write my dissertation. And see, since I was his last student, he wanted to get it done. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would wait for me to give him something. And as soon as he gave it to me, as soon as I gave it to him, he read it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way it proceeded was just like uh, the independent study. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd write something and then he'd look at it and he'd make comments on it. And, mm -hmm. you know, we'd talk about it and he'd give it back to me and I'd rewrite it. And we'd, we'd you know, he, he'd, make comments and you know, this is how we did. It was on the mind in its place in nature, but it was only on four chapters. <laughs> okay. Four. And uh, okay, I said, okay, you know. Mm. Uh, and uh, so uh, it got done. It got done in, in over the summer, it got done. And, uh, but the, the last uh, chapter, I gave the conclusion, I gave it to him. Mm. And uh, you know, he made his comments, he gave it back to me. And I'm looking through his comments, you know, because I know he wants me to take those into consideration when I write the final chapter. Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed a mistake. Mistake in the uh, previous chapters? And, uh, no, a mis mistake in his comments on my <laughs> conclusion. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> so, you know, I could not go along with it. Because mm -hmm. given the previous chapters in this and that, it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I had to call him up at home. And I did that with great trepidation. Of course. <laughs> of course you know, 
you're gonna fire me now you know? <laughs> but I, I didn't i didn't care i mean uh i i was not going to put this in my dissertation because it was wrong i just could So I called him up and I explained it to him and, and he listened to me and, and uh, he said to me uh, in his heavy uh, Austrian accent, uh, Nate, um, you've become a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> because you went against his advice. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, right, well, I mean, I, because, I don't know, because I saw an, a mistake or something, and uh -huh. you know, I took it out, you know, I, 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 I took it as uh, he admired the fact that I could see that there was a logical misstep or something, mm -hmm. and the next day in the office, the philosophy department was a small office, and they had a corridor, uh, uh, right in front of the uh, offices, and he was walking, and I was wa I happened to be walking towards him, and he was one of uh, the um, philosopher. He would he was with a colleague, one of my other professors, mm -hmm. and he stopped me, uh, and he he said to this other philosopher, Panayet Butcheroff, who was also a mentor to me, mm -hmm. that um, Nate, you know Nate has become a philosopher, sure. so. Um, that, uh, you know, that sticks in me. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, working with him, I mean, you read his stuff, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's impossible. Mm -hmm. It's impossible unless you, you know, study it. But uh, what, uh, uh, how he communicated with me and what he wrote down was the best stuff he ever wrote. <laughs> and, <laughs> And uh, uh, it, it benefited me tremendously. In fact, so, uh, so I started teaching in 72 and all that year I was busy teaching and then the summer. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, I was very um, highly motivated to uh, publish, mm -hmm. very highly motivated to publish. And so uh, what I did now, I'll, I'll mention this. I mean, I'm sort of getting to the very end, but I thought about this, you know, and you asked about if I had any tips for philosophers mm -hmm. that um, this is something that uh, uh, guided me at the start. It doesn't anymore. I mean, I'm retired for God's mm -hmm. sakes, you know, but, but what I wanted to do is not only So um, I would re I was re reading journals to mm -hmm. see what I could comment on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't thinking of publishing something for my dissertation. So I was just reading through journals to see what I could uh, publish on. And I came across this article on, so I, I was very interested as a, as a you know, a, a maniac interested in ontology. <laughs> I was interested in the, uh, um, you know, two red spots, one mm -hmm. and they have the same color and the same shape. What mm -hmm. accounts for their sameness and what accounts for their difference? Mm -hmm. The problem of universals and the problem of individuation. Right, and right. I was really interested in that. And I came across, uh, and I believe in universals, mm -hmm. okay? Universals as uh, non-temporal entities that uh, are the same in all their instances. And so I'm reading this. And so this is this article was published in 1973, uh, still influenced by Wittgenstein or that, and, and, and he, was, he was arguing that uh, 
that uh, that uh, that uh, the problem of universals is a pseudo problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I I uh, I wrote a response to that. Not a, a not a long article, you know, maybe six pages or something like that. That uh, where I you know set set out the argument, and it's either invalid or it's unsound because mm -hmm. it has it's false or premise it's question begging you know i went through right, a right. logical <laughs> shopping, you know uh -huh. and uh is accepted without revisions From as gosh. is in <laughs> mine, in mine. Uh, wow first, first 1973 you know so that was your first publication no revisions yes. accepted no revisions right? Wow! <laughs> you know, I I I, uh, I I screamed in the mm -hmm. office. You know, my mm -hmm. colleagues had to calm me down. You know, uh -huh, uh -huh. and of course, Linda, Linda, she she had she she was very impressed. Mm -hmm. Okay, because she had one of her professors that had published a paper in mine. And, you know, and anyway, well, she was philosophy major. Mm -hmm. So that um, uh, uh, at any rate, so. <laughs> uh, I owe a lot to I owe a lot to Bergman. Uh -huh, okay, uh -huh. I, owe, I owe a lot to Bergman. He helped me out a, a lot, and um, not only uh, uh, you know for being what he is. Because although there was one thing I will say, I, I uh, when I was interviewing for a job, I interviewed at Michigan State, and it turned out that uh, there was somebody there um, who knew Bergman. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he liked Bergman. Uh. You know, maybe, maybe Bergman, you know, attacked him at a paper or something, or made uh. him a fool because uh, this uh, suitor, his name was, I think, is this this uh, professor who was interviewing me. Really, you know, made me feel bad. Mm -hmm. You know, really attacked me, really cruel. Uh, at least I thought of it that way. But uh, but uh, but still, I owe I owe Bergman a lot. Mm -hmm. All right. He gave me a good foundation, and he gave me uh, uh, a uh, a way of thinking about philosophical problems that um, you know is has been uh, has worked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, like we're talking about uh, experiencing time. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm 75 years old. I've had a lot of. Experiences. I, I, I experiences of time. So, you know, talking about these things mm -hmm. is uh, talking about my experience of time mm -hmm. because, uh, because um, uh, I, I'm uh, uh, aware now of my position in time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, uh, I'm, a, I'm aware of my position in time. Uh, simply by being uh, conscious, mm -hmm. you know? I, I, I mean, I'm not aware of my position in time by being aware of the property of nowness that my experience has. I don't experience now. I mean, that, 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 that is not a property that I could point to, like I could point to the property of gray on my computer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, there's a debate: is is does the now exist, or or you know, what is the now? But but uh, to me, it's not a property of anything that I experience. But nevertheless, I'm aware of uh, it being now. I'm aware that you know now is the point in time at which I'm at, uh, simply in virtue of my being uh, conscious of having the experience that I'm having now. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I'm introducing the word now again, but just drop that. You know, the, <laughs> fact, that use, the fact that I use the word now uh, do, does not, for me, uh, have ontological significance. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to talk about that uh, a little bit uh, later. But uh, okay, so I, I think um, I think, uh, but, but just just to just to uh, just to uh, uh, conclude uh, that, that thought that I was getting at in terms of my uh, experience of time mm -hmm. from the point of view which I'm at, you know, I, I could see 
uh, in reflection uh, that, uh, you know, most of it, <laughs> at least half, <laughs> is, <laughs> is, is uh, um, earlier mm -hmm. than our conversation. Right. Right. <laughs> and and, and I'm, remembering, I rem I'm remembering all, you know, what mm. I'm talking about is it's, I'm connecting with it through memory. Mm. And that's part of my experience of it as being over. Mm. Mm. I, I mean, it's not so much, thank goodness it's over, you know. Not, That's not a presentist position, but really just acknowledging that you are, you were conscious of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, 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 I could, I could say that, which is a, a past tense operator or something, you know, were, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, without uh, worrying that uh, somebody's going to clobber me over the head and say I'm not really a B theorist. Or something like that. <laughs> actually, actually, we're not discussing the nature of time though. Well, you work, your work is mostly devoted to the philosophy of time. So you have two big works and a lot of edited material on the philosophy of time. So let's get into this. So how do philosophers tackle the question about the nature of time? Okay, well, um, there are uh, many different ways mm -hmm. in, in which philosophers uh, tackle the nature of time. And I, I, I wanna talk about um, some of those, I guess, you know, one or mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. at least. Uh, and, um, uh, and again, I'll, I'll talk about it by uh, referencing my own uh, history. Mm -hmm. And uh, so and I, I might say, just, well, just, just let me mention this, uh, you know, we'll get into the A theory, the B theory, the R theory, mm -hmm. that my first book on time, so I had a full, you know, I mean, I still have a career in the philosophy of time, but I had a 40 year teaching career. And my, my first book, which, uh, was, uh, it was entitled The um, um, Temporal Relations and Temporal Becoming, mm -hmm. a defense of a Russellian theory of time. So e even though I thought of myself as a B theorist and uh, um, I defended the B theory, my Russellian roots, roots you know, from logical atomism uh, were with me forever, okay? And, and so, but, okay, so when I, I, fir I first got interested in the philosophy of time through uh, a seminar on the philosophy of time in 1968. Mm -hmm. And at that time, um, there were two books that were very influential on time, from which the uh, 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 terms uh, B theory and A theory derived. This is Richard uh, Gale's work? Yes, Richard Gale's work. Uh -huh. I mean, there was the A series and the B series with McTaggart. I'll say mm -hmm. something about that. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, the, the 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 moniker A theory and B theory was first introduced by Richard Gale, mm -hmm. and the, one of those books was an anthology, which is what I used in class, entitled um, "The Philosophy of Time," mm -hmm. that in, included. Um, um, uh, Broad's ostensible temporality, right? Examination of McNaggett's philosophy, mm. which is uh, I gave a report on that. That got that was my first interest, and the other was entitled "The Language of Time." Mm. And uh, and during that time, and when I first began my career at UM Flint. The, uh, uh, the issue uh, was a linguistic issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the language of time was the title of the book because the, the debate, while it, uh, it was centered a lot on, on language. And, so this one is the uh, problem of 
how to come up with the semantics for tense languages? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Or, or well, yeah. I mean, or, or, or yes. I mean, so the, the the issue, the issue was okay. So there's the A series and the B series. The A series and the B series were series named first, characterized as A series and B by McTaggart. So the right. A series is is uh, uh, when you analyze the terms in terms of past, present, future, mm -hmm. and the B series is you know, are 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 the same terms presumably in terms of earlier, later, simultaneous, mm -hmm. and and the the two theories based on the A A, A series and the B series are that to get to your original question, uh, which are more fundamental, mm -hmm. uh, the passage or the relational view is that the A, the A theory is that um, the A series is more fundamental. A series uh, are is a series of terms that have the properties, the non-relational monadic properties of pastness, presentness and futurity. All right, now McTaggart himself thought that um, uh, those properties were really relations to some term outside the series, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, that, that's, that's not crucial. The, the point is that um, uh, uh, on the A theory, uh, temporal properties are fundamental. Right. And in fact, they are, um, uh, well, the only intrinsically temporal entities. Mm -hmm. So that, for example, uh, uh, McTaggart um, gives an analysis of B relations. He gives two analyses of B relations. Uh, one, one is uh, explicitly in terms of uh, uh, A properties, mm -hmm. when it says that uh, A is earlier than B, um, when, uh, you know, it means that uh, uh, A is uh, past and B is present mm -hmm. uh, while, uh, or A is past while B is present, or uh, a is present uh, while B is future. So mm -hmm. if, if these uh, disjuncts occur, then A is earlier than B. Mm -hmm. And that uh, that analysis uh, does away, presumably, with uh, temporal relations as fundamental. Uh, as fundamental. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I might just say that. Um, uh, it doesn't because, <laughs> because the, the notion of while mm. is it's simultaneous. Right, 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 right. So you have not analyzed it. You have not reduced right. it. Right, right. Okay. Right, mm. right. But that that's uh, but 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 that's that's the project. Mm -hmm. The the uh, the the other analysis he gives. Uh, which looks like it has a better chance of success. And this connects with the notion of the C theory. You know, I mean, I, I had seen the C, C theory around, but I hadn't, I hadn't read anything about it. But when you mentioned it, I said, okay, I better find out what it is. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not a surprise that they called it the C theory. <laughs> and and the, the, reason, the reason is this, that um, uh, McTaggart, uh, introduces uh, in addition to the A series and the B series, the C series. Mm -hmm. And the C series is a non-temporal series. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, uh, he says that this non-temporal series, and he analyzes, gives a ontological analysis of, uh, it's an ordered series, has the logical properties to generate an order in the terms, but it's not a temporal series. Right. And, and so in order for you to get a temporal series, 
a B series. The B series is a temporal series. In order to get a, a temporal series from the C series, which is non-temporal, you need to uh, uh, so, uh, you need to uh, uh, characterize the uh, terms of the T C series as either past, present, or future. You know, and then once yeah, once yeah, you do yeah. this, you have, you have this series, and you know, one's past, one's present, one's future. Then it follows that A is earlier than B, and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what's what's interesting about that is that um, um, what's interesting about that is, and he recognizes this himself. And this is a point that uh, Kit Fine makes in one of his paper, I think it's called The Reality of Tense, mm -hmm. is that uh, if, if you have a series, an ordered series, and e even if you, you have um, uh, these, te these temporal properties uh, characterizing the terms of the series, uh, that doesn't yet give you a um, a genuine, you know, it doesn't give you uh, real time. Mm -hmm. Because in order to have real time, you have to have, uh, it, it's the, it, you, it, you have to have passage. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not enough to have, he says, that just gives you a static series with each one of these things having the pro properties, but that still doesn't give you the tense passage really. time, right, right, okay, <laughs> right. But you're you against that, that, right? I, I'm against practically everything. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, no, that point, mm -hmm. that point that he's making, I agree with. Mm -hmm. I'm not against that. Namely, that if you have a non if you have a non-temporal series, and and you um, order them, uh, and it's ordered, mm -hmm. it's ordered, just by attributing tense properties to it, just by adding tense onto it, that doesn't give you a temporal series yet. Mm -hmm. Because you so, don't so have the, the, the flow of time. You can't capture that yes, using that. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. You don't have change. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and um, uh, I mean, that, that, that is uh, um, at the root of the objection to the B theory. Mm -hmm. Because the B theory is uh, often thought of as what you get if you take away the A properties from the series. From time. Right. If you take away the A properties from time, then it, then you have a, a, a C series, mm -hmm. but uh, and which is not a temporal series. I mean, right? Isn't it the objection to the B theory that there's there's no passage, and so there's you have a block universe <laughs> and if you have a block universe there's no dynamism but dynamism is the essence of time and so mm -hmm. if what you have what if you know the block universe cannot account for our experience of time as right. being dynamic but um I, i'm getting uh, far afield here uh the point that uh, okay let's, let's get back to the um <laughs> the question of uh, how does one go about answering the question, what's mm -hmm. fundamental? But that was, that, that was a, uh, a tangent. No, it's okay. a good tangent. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, because McTaggart now- makes the, McTaggart makes the same point. Mm. Yeah, that's a problem of change for B theory. That's a problem of change for the B theory. Mm. Especially if you take the B unless it's, it's a problem, especially if you take the B relation to be the C relation. If mm -hmm. you don't, if, if you, which um, is, uh, is uh, what uh, the uh, B theory is committed to. Mm -hmm. I think that the McTaggart's point is that if you have the C series in 
since you have the C series, then you can't have time, right? That's why time is, uh, un is unreal. That's the, the conclusion that McTaggart. Well, let, let's, let's, take it, let's take it this way. Mm. Let's take it this way. Uh, suppose we accept the idea, which seems logical enough, <laughs> that the C series, even if you superimpose the A properties, is not enough to give you time. Mm -hmm. Because you still just have a static series with monadic properties attributed to each of the terms. Right. So it's it's so ten, but there's tense, right? So these uh, monadic properties are in the past or in the present or in the future. But Kit Fine's point is that no, it's it's the events. Right. 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 It's but, events that are in the past, the present, or the future. Mm -hmm. Now, what you get, what you're getting at, what you're getting at is what McTaggart makes too. But the point that I want to emphasize here, which Fine makes and McTaggart makes, mm -hmm. which I'm concurring with wholeheartedly, <laughs> if you start off with a non-temporal series, simply uh, attributing the property of past this to a certain block of it, presentness mm -hmm. to, a, uh, and then futurity, and leave it at that, you don't have time. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have... The passage of time. The, the passage, flow, yeah. The flow yes. of time. And you can't yes. account for change. So I think this yes. is still the debate between McTaggart and Russell, right? About change. Well, no, wait, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, okay. okay. Well, yeah, yes, yes. No, well, see, oh, see, th this is, this is, you know, <laughs> uh, McTaggart identifies, he thinks he's criticizing Russell. Mm. He doesn't, met, hey, and I'll, uh, let me just get a different story. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you know, do you know uh, 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 R.D. Ingthorson? Ingerson, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. You know him. Okay, so I I met him a few years ago mm -hmm. uh, at, in um, Copenhagen at a mm -hmm. conference, and I was talking to him, and he told me that uh, you know he asked me, do you know why Russell never responded to McTaggart? <laughs> why? <laughs> because McTaggart, you know, they were both at Cambridge, uh -huh. knew each other, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, uh, McTaggart was for the war. Mm, so there's a political under. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. That's a I good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Isn't that okay? So, but no, wait, wait. Let's yeah. get get into this tangent. So Russell was a pacifist, World War One, and McTaggart was for war. Is is that the underlying uh, dispute between these two philosophers? <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, the emotion, the emotion, uh, the emotion carried sway. You know, he didn't yeah. want to dignify uh, a, uh, a war <laughs> uh, uh, Okay. So at any at any rate, at any rate, so this is a fundamental point. This is what I'm working on now. With uh, I don't know if you know Emiliano Bocardi, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm working uh, with him. On, on, on distinguishing the B theory from the R theory. Mm. I mean, you know, for many years, yes, I held the B theory, but in my heart, I, I believe what I believe now pre pretty much. So, mm. you know, I, I just went along with, okay, you know, I believe that temporal variations are fundamental and there are no temporal properties. So I just went along, but okay. This is a very important point. And, and what's the best way to put it, but it, it's this. If you look, uh, again, uh, well, we all know this, in the nature of existence, the chapter on time, where he argues for the unreality of time. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's in the earlier 1908 paper where he gives the analysis of B relations in terms of the C series right. and yeah. these properly superimposed. But in, in, the, um, uh, in the nature of existence, 
in uh, the chapter on time, he is clearly identifying B relations with Russell's view that B relations alone constitute time, that you don't need. Uh, I hope you all agree that uh, McTaggart's uh, attacking Russell. Mm -hmm. But not in, the B theory. Uh, and the B, the B theory. Mm -hmm. That the B series can't constitute time, you know, that mm -hmm. you need you need the A series. Now, what I'm saying is that the B series, B series as McTaggart understands it, is not the B series as Russell understands it. Mm -hmm. Because the B series, and, and therefore his attack on uh, the B series as constituting time by itself uh, is not an attack on the B theory. Russell. <laughs> right. It's an attack on the B theory uh -huh. because B theorists think of uh, think of time in terms of the B series. Mm. Okay, so uh, let, let me put it like this: so if if you do think of the B series as uh, McTaggart does namely as a non-temporal series characterized by the uh, A series, mm -hmm. then, um, uh, then what? Number one, uh, that doesn't give you time mm -hmm. because it doesn't give you uh, passage. And number two, uh, if you take away the um, A series, from his analysis of uh, the B series, mm -hmm. then you don't have time either. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Right. But uh, but okay. The point uh, that uh, I you know I I would argue is that. Uh, what you from if what you take away from McTaggart's analysis are or is the A series the A mm -hmm. property, then um, uh, what you have left uh, is is uh, not a temporal series, even if the relation that generates the order is a B relation mm -hmm. in itself. Because um, uh, the B relation is static, lacks right. dynamism. Right. And the right. reason why the B relation lacks dynamism, this is not because of McTaggart's analysis, but because uh, there's nothing to ground the dynamism mm -hmm. of the B relation. Because uh, B theorists analyze the B relation in terms of, I don't know, entropy or causality. Mm -hmm. They reduce the B relation to something else but that cannot be the ground of passage or, or the ground of the dynamic aspect of time, time right and so in effect uh by um confusing russell's view with mctaggart's uh interpretation analysis, of the, yeah okay relations uh, that gives rise to all the problems mm -hmm. because then you have this B relation without the A properties, which is, um, you know, if it's not, it's not, it's still not fundamental. Mm -hmm. There's something more fundamental mm -hmm. because it's not a primitive, intrinsically temporal relation. It's mm -hmm. analyzed, it's reduced to causation or, or whatnot. And so it's 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 got an order but not a direction.
Yeah, so I'm trying to, to grasp what's going on in your main view. So you have two theories so far, A theory and B theory, at least as McTaggart has showed it. Or the A series will be something like past, present, future. Events are in the past, present, and future. The same event might be past, now present, and will be future. Okay, excuse me. Excuse uh, me. Yeah. I, I have to stop you because mm -hmm. you're introducing something into his analysis that has not yet been discussed. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you uh -huh. can't, you, okay, let me explain what I mean. So we've analyzed uh, his uh, B relation, his analysis, his understanding of the B relation mm -hmm. as a C relation whose terms, whose terms have an A property. Right. Okay. But that is not time because there's no passage. Yeah. So you don't, you don't have a, you don't have a B relation yet. You know, you don't have time yet. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have the flow of time, but you have some kind of past relation, future relation, present relation, right? Yeah, but it's, it's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's not time for you to <laughs> it's, it's not time yes you have yeah. you know but it's obviously uh -huh. a you know a, a worthless theory of time mm -hmm. you know it's static mm -hmm. it's it's you know i mean what the yes you do have an intrinsically temporal relate uh, property mm -hmm. you know the past, past is present is the future mm -hmm. You don't have a temporal relation unless you're talking about the relation between, you know, he also defines pastness as a relation between a, a term of the series and a term outside the series, mm -hmm. you know, which is, uh, yeah, okay, you know, you have that, but that doesn't give you um, uh, passage. That doesn't give you uh, uh a temporal relation, you know, that doesn't give you uh, time. That doesn't mm. give you time yet mm. because uh, you don't have passage. So, you know, you could say, well, but you still have time because you have these temporal properties. Yeah, but you haven't accounted for temporal relation and uh, you, 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 ha you haven't account, you haven't counted for earlier and later and you haven't accounted <laughs> for uh, uh, you know, past, present, and future, uh -huh. the change that you began with in your first sentence. Uh -huh. So it's worthless. All right. And McTaggart recognizes that, you know, in, in the 1908 article, he recognizes that in order to have uh, a, a passage, in order to have time, you have to have um, passage, uh, passage which involves uh, change. Mm -hmm. You might say, yes, you, you have to have, uh, um, it, it's not enough that uh, each term of the C series, which allegedly is also a B series because of the properties that it had, the temporal property that has, they, the, the terms they have to change, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the temporal properties. I mean, that's, that's where you came in, but I'm just saying that's a, the next step. That's the next step. We weren't at that step. Right. That, that right. His point is you have to introduce you have to introduce the terms of the C series that have one and only one A property changing with respect to their A properties. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what he says, you know, I don't have it right front in front of me. And this is what he says is that uh, what it what it means to say that they change their A properties uh, is that uh, uh, um, uh, they that uh, they each, change each their term. yeah each term changes its position in time right so here's event M okay each term successively right right has different properties mm -hmm. <laughs> you get the point. Right, right, right. So he's analyzing succession in terms of the C series being superimposed on the, uh, so having the A series superimposed the B series mm. or the C series. So you can't explain that that doesn't do it. 
So, okay, you have passage, but passage involves the terms successively having different A properties. Mm -hmm. But then you're taking succession as the ground mm -hmm. of the passage, as the primitive that's accounting for the passage. <laughs> so that's a B series all over again. Yes, only <laughs> it's the true B series. It's what the B series really is, maybe uh -huh. the R series. All right. It's not the other crap with the you know C series with the properties. Uh huh. So this is the Russell theory. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. So I mean, he his point is that well, uh, and he says this explicitly that uh, that's not going to work because uh, to say that uh, it successively has different uh, tense properties is. Uh, uh, appeals to uh, time and tense, you know, it's, it's, it's first future that, you know, I mean, it, 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 he just reintroduces his analysis of earlier and later mm -hmm. or succession. He just reintroduces his analysis. And, and so uh, uh, he never, you never have time because at each stage, you simply have uh, a static universe. If you're going to analyze, you just have a second level of of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, without without getting specific about that, you can see the point that if he doesn't take succession as primitive, then he doesn't have passage. Mm -hmm. But if you take succession as primitive, you have passage. So why bother with A properties? <laughs> <laughs> <Do AD, man. laughs> Excellent. So that's, uh, that's a uh... I, I think for me, that's a new way of thinking about the A theory, B theory, right? Because in most textbooks in metaphysics, they usually start with, here's the A theory, and it has this kind of idea that there's a past, present, and future. So, so all events are moving from past to future. Then you have the B theory that tells you that, well, everything past, present, and future is just there. It's all static. But the way you have presented it, you're saying that, wait, that's not what MacTaggart is saying. And that's not what Russell was saying all of those years ago. So the yeah, no, but that, that, is, that is, that is, that is what, what MacTaggart's saying. That is what MacTaggart's saying. Yeah, but- Because, but, it, because you don't have, you never get uh, time. Mm -hmm. that he's saying time is unreal. You never get time because <laughs> because uh, in order to get time, you need passage. Mm, but you can't in have the passage. Get passage. You need succession, but see, there is no succession. Mm. There's just the C series and the A series. Mm. Yeah, but in so, the textbooks, in the textbooks, they're attributing the B theory, at least the Russell theory, in terms of the MacTaggart. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Now I'm getting it. Now I'm getting it. So, so your 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 main project right now is to distinguish. Well, that's not really the B theory as Russell thought about it. It's more of how MacTaggart thought about the B theory. Yes, which is taken over by B yes. theorists. <laughs> you know, yeah, mean, Jack Smart. All B theorists identify the uh, B theory with the B series. Right. If so. You, if you believe that B series constitutes time, then you're a B theorist. Mm -hmm. B theorist but, uh, in, in MacTaggart's sense of B theory. I mean, they don't realize that, okay? Yeah, my, yeah. My, but, but in effect, they are because uh, they, they're not accepting uh, uh, the R relation mm -hmm. as a primitive temporal relation. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. analyzing it. Mm -hmm in terms of they're reducing it, you know, to some, I mean, the some form, yeah, causality or supervenience to some, some primitive facts in the world. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. So you're, you're saying here that here's the whole enterprise of philosophy of time right now. And it, it rests on a mistake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, just <laughs> terrific. <laughs> You so know, how, I mean, they're, they're misunderstanding Russell's view. Right. So your your public uh, your publications are on the R theory, and you're saying that this is the real B theory of time. 
that Russell is thinking about. But how do you uh, get well, into? Well, well, no, I, I don't think I'd put it that way, you know, because that that's just you know that's never going to to fly, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, I, I I did, you know, some of my first writings where I was changing over the R theory. I talk about I talked about the BR theory, mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. but but now I see we got to go whole hog. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a, a different theory, <laughs> the R theory yes, for you, yes. yeah. because because the B theory, uh, the objections work, mm -hmm. because the B theory is treating the uh, uh, B series as an ordered series, mm -hmm. simply. Right, right. It doesn't, it doesn't get at the temporality of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, like uh, atheists are right that, that uh, time has a dyna dyn dynamism that can't be, um, can't be denied. Mm -hmm. That's the essence of time. If you take that away that, you just have a block theory, you know. <laughs> And then that that there's no change, and that, that that can't be right. There's something missing. Mm -hmm. But the whole the whole argument there, I say, is based on um, well, not not the whole argument, uh, but uh, a good the whole way of character characterization of the debate, perhaps. Uh, it seems like uh, your main point is that the whole debate so far as at, 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 as at, as it stands right now between the A theories and B theory, it's a kind of um, resting on a mistaken view of our understanding of Russell's theory. Yes. Right. So that's uh, the main line. But I'm, I'm, what I want to ask is, how about how, how do we fit in presentism, the growing universe view, moving spotlight view, eternalism in this, in your picture? Of the philosophy of time. Well, uh, in this way, in this way, mm -hmm. uh, the heart of uh, Russellian view. Uh, I mean, I don't know if Russell would agree with everything that I'm saying and so <laughs> on, but it's this the spirit mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, succession. Uh, is uh, a primitive. It's a primitive relation. It's a primitive. Mm -hmm. it, it can't be analyzed in terms of A properties or C relations or mm -hmm. absolute becoming or, uh, or uh, causation or, mm -hmm. you know, any of physical relations. It's, you know, it, it's like, you know, red. <laughs> you don't analyze red. In terms of other, color. yeah, okay. That's a I mean, yeah, you can talk about wavelengths or whatever, you know, but, uh, but that's we're talking not a, about, how we we're talking about the, the phenomenology of time, mm -hmm. you know, that's what mm -hmm. we're talking about here. I mean, that's where you start all the experience of time. What, you know, how, what, what is it that we're aware of clearly as time? So it's a succession and, of events. Yes, and, and okay, and this is, uh, this is important too, that, and that that's a succession itself. Uh, is um, intrinsically directed. Mm -hmm. It's not. It, it's intrinsically directed. That that that's that that's that's part of you know. It's a, a, a simple property of of succession is that it it it's going from earlier to later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, in terms of the question that you asked me, um, uh, so what what I'm getting at is that uh, the uh, uh, issue in the philosophy of time, I mean, this isn't this, yeah, is, is uh, you know, there's, there's the, the most, uh, okay, I'll, I'll just put it in these terms. I mean, the issue in the philosophy of time, and I'd have to spell this out, which I'm, I'm starting to fade out here, and I want to talk to your students, is really the issue between the naturalist and the ontologist. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the, the naturalist is somebody who believes that uh, the spatial temporal universe is uh, all that there is. Mm -hmm. Okay, there, there, there are no abstract entities construed of as atemporal entities. Okay, it's, you know, all that exists is concrete. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Whereas, but so I'm saying that the issue is between the 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 naturalist and the ontologist recognizes that in addition to the uh, uh, spatiotemporal uh, universe, there is the world, and the world is greater than the universe, and the <laughs> world contains abstract things that are atemporal, like universals. That, uh, <laughs> universal, you know. And there, you know there's, you know, not, not necessarily universals that exist, uh, platonic universals, mm -hmm. but, but uh, simply there exists a, a realm of non-temporal uh, objects and facts. Mm -hmm. But, and that, that, that's what's fundamentally at issue. But, but I, I, don't, I don't want to spell that out. The, the, the issue uh, in terms of uh, presentism, the growing block, um, even eternalism, you know, I, I, it, it is, is still, it is, uh, has to do with, um, okay, let's, let's put it like this. You know, if you go back to McTaggart, um, uh, who, you know, there's the there's C series, there's the A series, but you need more to get time, mm. passage, in order to get, pa and in, in order to have passage that's not totally contradictory. You know, mm. it's not enough to say you have passage because each event is past, present, and future because <laughs> those are incompatible properties, right? Right, right, so, right. And, and the Taggart doesn't say that's why there's a contradiction. Mm. Uh, the the contradiction, in fact, he, he, he insists that uh, each term in the A series has uh, only one, one and only one A property. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, he says, but you know, I mean, we need passage. And so they have to have uh, all three incompatible properties. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, if they have them apart from time, you have a contradiction. Right, that's McTaggart's paradox. Uh, yes, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but he says they don't have, no, nobody would say <laughs> they have them apart from time. You know, uh -huh. as soon as he says that, yes, they have them all, but they don't have them at the same time. They mm. have them successively. Mm. So I like okay. that. Bit. So that's a way to solve the McTag McTaggart's paradox. If you plug in succession, oh, that's that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> and then you don't need eight properties. Right. <laughs> what a waste. Mm. We're not we don't we don't we're not acquainted. I'm not acquainted with eight properties. Yeah, you don't know what the it's past supposed is. Be, it's supposed to be non-relational properties, simple mm. properties. Yeah, like monadic bread. properties. Yeah, right, right. So, so in terms of, and that's, that's why causation is not going to cut it for me as mm -hmm. the analysis is so, because I could be aware of uh, a, a, a one thing following another uh, without uh, being aware of their being causally connected. Mm -hmm. But if, if, you know, if, if, if uh, pass it, so uh, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. They, 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 yeah, it seems like okay. even even causation could be defined in terms of succession. So the, the cause is before the effect. So you have defined causation in terms of the, the primitive succession relation. Well, uh, uh, it's not primitive. I mean, if yep. you're telling, are you telling me that that? Uh, that causation itself is not primitive because you can define that in terms of succession. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. no fooling. <laughs> yeah, because I, I like the, the, the idea that from the phenomenology of time that events are succeed one another. So you have that as your primitive. You define everything else yeah. in terms of that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, broad distinguishes between, I, I wanna, you know, I'll, I'll say this and then I'll, kind of get back to your question about presentism. Yep. Um, but Broad, uh, in scientific thought, he um, distinguishes between something having changed and between something uh, 
having changed and something changing. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, when I, I think of myself, you know, in the Bronx, <laughs> carrying on like a nutcase, uh, <laughs> and I think of myself now, you know, so being, professor, think, uh, professor emeritus. I, I've changed, you know, right. I can think of myself as having changed. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I'm watching a second hand, I, I, I am not perceiving that something has changed. I'm perceiving something changing. Mm -hmm. It's a different experience. I'm experiencing something changing. If 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 I if I uh, uh, am listening to a uh, a, 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 the, a church steeple bell mm -hmm. ringing, I I could experience there occurring in succession mm -hmm. the change of sounds. You know, if 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 a doctor is checking my abdomen and and tapping on it. I could experience the successive taps. taps. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm saying is that that's the dynamic aspect of time, that that, that, that succession is a, a, a primitive relation that is dynamic. Mm -hmm. It's a primitive relation that is dynamic, that can't be analyzed, that that's, that that's the nature of uh, time itself of time itself. Right. So going back now, to the question about presentism, eternalism, how do they fit in this, this way of characterizing? Well, time? so, so what, what uh, you know, when McTaggart says that, um, uh, uh, yes, uh, each event has past, present, and future, mm -hmm. uh, he says there's no contradiction in that because they have them successively. Okay, and and um, uh, when uh, um, uh, Fine says that if you just have a series with, you know, and add the property of presentness to it, you know, that's still static. That doesn't give you time yet because you need succession to to get time. So that begs the question: Well, what is succession? What's the analysis of succession? And, and, you know, I mean, I've said a little bit about it, but if you go to presentism, um, well, you know, obviously this is uh, uh, debatable. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, there's, there are new, you know, new versions of presentism coming out and so on and so forth. But, um, uh, you know, what I would say, uh, which is not uh, new, but uh, still uh, would be, is that um, uh, if only the present exists, you know. There's no succession. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. Now, with regard to the growing block, um, when uh, what what uh, what generates uh, succession is a new event mm -hmm. coming into existence, mm -hmm. and um, now. Uh, what, what do I want to say about that? I mean, one, one thing, one thing that, um, well, one thing that just occurs to me is that uh, uh, if, <laughs> if, if there's a, a new event, when this new event comes into existence, it uh, uh, a relation mm -hmm. comes into existence, right? 
right? I mean, you know, because that follows, yeah. there, was a, there was a moment. That no when, relation that exists. There's a moment when this event existed, existed mm -hmm. but there was nothing after it. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, the next moment when this exist, event e exists and, and uh, there is something after it. Okay, I mean, that's, that's what the growing block is. Yeah. So uh, that, 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 uh, that, they, okay, uh, on the face of it, uh, that to me implies that um, uh, the growing block presupposes time. Mm -hmm. There's a time where it, okay, for, it, either it's a contradiction Mm -hmm. Because how could one in the same event not have a uh, relation <laughs> to an event mm -hmm. and have a relation to an event? Mm -hmm. Or uh, if uh, that, that's a contradiction, or if you say, well, it has them at different times. Then you're presupposing time. <laughs> <laughs> What do you know? <laughs> okay. Right. So uh, lastly, you know, so there, this is, this is, uh, you know, I mean, if, if you, if you look around, there's a debate in temporal ontology. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that, that's, that's a debate. I mean, you know, there's a debate, debate over um, whether or not there's a genuine dispute between uh, presentists and eternalists. Mm -hmm. They're using the word, you know, presence says only the present exists and the eternal says past, present, future exists. Well, are they, you know, using different senses of existence and so on? There's, there's so this is a meta-ontology debate. Tem yeah, temp they call it temporal ontology. Mm, temporal and it's ontology. a debate, it's, a, it's a, yeah, you know, it's a, the, the, the temporal ontology is, the, the, is not the debate over, um, Oh, the temporal ontology is a debate over what temporal entities exist. Right. Do right. Only present temporal entities exist? Past and present temporal exist? Or past, present, future temporal entities exist? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's usually characterized as presentism. Uh, During block. Eternal yeah. Debate. yeah. Where eternalism is the view that past, present, future exist. Mm -hmm. All right, so so you know we said something about presentism. We said something about um, growing block, growing block. Mm -hmm. So eternalism. Um, num num number number one. I I think about this debate. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> That's <all> right. <laughs> My mother once told me, "If you don't have something nice to say, don't say it. <laughs> well, I, I, I have to say that this debate between presentism, eternalism is one that's doing the rounds in philosophy circles. So you have people like Ted Sider, people like Kristen Miller thinking about presentism, eternalism. But what could you say about that debate? What I would say about that gets back to something I said a little while ago about what I think is the fundamental, really <laughs> fundamental in the philosophy of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is that, um, well, uh, I'll, I'll put it in two steps. The, the first step is if the, if the debate, present in the turn of the, you know, what entities exist in time, then I, I think uh, in order to answer that question, we first have to see what what's, time is. You're right. What's the nature of time? Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. That's, that's number one. That's mm. fair, isn't it? You yes. Know, that's, that's, fair. The, that's the question of the ontology of time. So mm. I would distinguish the question of, of uh, temporal ontology with the ontology of time and saying the ontology of time is more fundamental because you have to answer that question before you could determine what entities go into the domain of temporal entities. Mm -hmm. and, okay, and, this, and the second point I'd wanna make is that uh, if, if, you, if you think about the debate as over what entities exist in time, 
that that's the, the fundamental debate in the philosophy of time, mm -hmm. then you're presupposing that uh, 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 time does not uh, consists of uh, entities that exist outside of time. <laughs> but they do. Mm -hmm. Or at least that's debatable whether things are just spatial temporal or there's something outside space, space and time. Which is time. <laughs> okay. That's, that's temporal relations which constitute the essence of time are universals. Mm. And universals do not exist in time. Right, right. No, and temporal I facts, which involves uh, uh, relations between particulars that do exist in time, are also abstract entities. Mm. So that, so that um, there's an element of truth in both um the passage of time and the uh relational or static aspect of time mm -hmm. if you will <laughs> and and the element of truth is that while the um uh the uh, uh passage of time is grounded in um, relational uh, universals and succession. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes, I'm here. Yep. Okay. So, so, so um, uh, the passage of time is grounded in succession, which is a relation that does not exist in time. Because mm -hmm. it's a universal. <laughs> uh, the terms of the relation exist in time. Mm -hmm. And the, the terms of succession existing in time, that complex is a fact. Mm -hmm. And that fact too, does not exist time. in time. <laughs> right, right. It follows. So and 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 the and 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 therefore that fact does not change. Does not mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. And and so that uh, that fact uh, uh, is. Um, but I I wouldn't I wouldn't you you could say time as a whole is static it doesn't mm. change none of the facts in time change because it's not in time it can't change but it contains the dynamic aspect of time and it also contains change now mm. the analysis of change has doubt but it is not a uh, uh like the eternalist would have it namely um you know, the past, present, and future. They're all there. Uh, yeah, you know, all, all those terms existing. Mm -hmm. Because with, without, uh, without the succession, the terms that um, are uh, united, uh, yeah, they, they, yeah, there's no temporal. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so, so I'm hearing uh, Saint Let's Augustine. See. Well, what, what? Uh, Hello, what, can you hear me? Uh, Hello. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So I think uh, we're I can, going. Yeah, we're going can back. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can yeah. hear you fine. So you I can think, hear me. Hello. You're right. Yes. Are we? Okay, so I think we're going back to Augustine here because Augustine has a distinction between you now eternal time and natural time, I think, in one of his uh, in his confessions. It seems like we're going back to Augustine in a way, the, the way you you develop the theory, your theory. See, for Augustine, there's a distinction between eternal time and natural time. So natural time is just 
you know, how we experience time in spatial temporal world. The eternal time is the time of God. It's outside uh, natural time. I'm not sure if that, 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 that's relevant here. Uh, well, I, 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 um, I'd say, <laughs> you know, I, I would call the time as we experience it, mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, well, is, is outside of time. Mm. And it better be. <laughs> okay. Because if, if it's not, mm -hmm. then we're going to need another time to say what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so uh, let's go to now to your, to on a more personal note, okay? Um, you have been, you know, a philosopher for most of your life. So what's your advice for those who want to get into professional philosophy? Um, you know, that, that's, a, that's a question of, um, in some ways, it's a practical question, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of uh, it's it's hard to get a job in philosophy. All right, I mean that's in the states it is, and I, I assume it's the same in the Philippines. I don't know, or anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. it's hard. I mean, uh, uh, I was lucky, as I said, you know. I mean, when I my job, I told you, I started, I got I got hired in July. And that's because the person that they chose, uh, the executive committee of the university rejected him. <laughs> and so at the last minute, they called me, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I didn't know what I was gonna do, okay? So, so that, that's, that's one question, you know? I, so I, I, I don't have a tip about how to get a job in philosophy or, uh, you know, but what I would say is, uh, as a tip, um, or as a reason to go in, uh, two things, you know, one, one thing is a tip. When I started, uh, and I, I think, uh, I'm, I mean, judging by how your career is unfolding, and so far as I'm aware of it, I, I think you would uh, agree with me that uh, the important thing right from the start, once you do get a job, is to be as active as possible. You know, get yourself out there. You know, try and try and publish articles, even if they're short articles. You know, don't necessarily worry about uh, uh, the journal that you're publishing in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all, I mean, that uh, it doesn't matter. You know, I go to, uh, um, you know, meetings, even if they're just local meetings. Uh, to you know, let the university knows uh, that you're you're serious about this. You know, the the more of that you could do, the better. Uh, and uh, now, for myself, um, you know, I've I've been retired. I taught for forty years, and I've be, been retired since um, two thousand and twelve. Mm -hmm. But uh, evidently, I'm I'm still <laughs> interested. Right, and doing yeah. good work. Uh, and and um, uh, and it's it's not only uh, for um, uh, to me philosophy is a way of uh, transcending life's travails mm. when they arise. You know, I mean, I'm able to use philosophy as a way of uh, um, escaping the rigors of daily life. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that uh, uh, I would pursue uh, for my own serenity. And, and that it's, you know, I mean, I, I'm not, uh, given my age, uh, I'm so happy that I had philosophy mm -hmm. because not only uh, have I had a successful career, but uh, that um, has, um, you know, 
get get kept me from going postal. But <laughs> <So, laughs> is so, the career so, worth it? Uh, yeah, of course, you know, of course. Mm -hmm. and, and it turned out because I was, uh, I mean, I was fortunate also that um, the university that I was at, of course, University of Michigan is, is very famous, but uh, I, I, yes, and I taught the University of Michigan, but, you know, as, at a regional mm -hmm. institution, you know, just like various schools have regional that are, that are not quite as well known uh, because they, I wanted to say, uh, uh, um, I wanted to say say this that uh, when I uh, when I start my I haven't taught but when I taught uh, philosophy 101 I, I would be you know people would ask me what is philosophy or you know I'd start by talking about what is philosophy and I'd, I'd I, you know I'd I'd say something and then then I I describe philosophy as like a tennis match mm -hmm. in that. Um, uh, the person serves, and the person who serves is is serving up their view or their argument, mm -hmm. and the person returns it, and that that's like a response to the argument. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, and then a volley ensues. <laughs> and, and philosophy is like that. Only instead of it going the ball going like this, it's going like this. You know, I'm, I'm describing a spiral. Uh, a spiral, mm -hmm. you know, going up, and what's at the top is uh, the truth. <laughs> <All right>? Hopefully. <laughs> well, you know, they're right. And, you know, what, what's the truth? But uh, to believe in philosophy, at least my belief in philosophy, is that the truth is to be found, mm -hmm. that the truth exists, and that um, uh, uh, First of all, it's it's you know it's worth the time and effort to pursue it, and uh, uh, facts matter, the truth <laughs> matters. Okay, this day and age, and it, you know I believe in it, mm -hmm. and I think it does matter. And and if you find it, then uh, that's a good thing, you know. And and so. Um, so you're not um, going for alternative facts and post-shoot? No, 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 no Facts are facts. They can't be true or false. They're just facts. Yeah, yes. yes. <laughs> well, but, uh, yeah, so I think that's the end for us. So thanks again, Professor Oaklander, for sharing your time with us. And join me again for another episode of Philosophy and What Matters, where we discuss things that matter from a philosophical point of view. Cheers.